All right, welcome back to another lecture wrap up video. So this is uh, for lecture number 15 from Engineering 17, Section 2 here, spring quarter uh, 2014 at UC Davis. So today we talked a little bit more, and this is actually kind of finishing out the chapter more or less on uh, sinusoidal steady state analysis, uh, introducing sinusoidal sources and looking at uh, things more in the frequency domain through these complex impedances, okay? So we talked about four primary topics today. Source transformations, uh, the node voltage method for analysis, mesh current method for analysis, and phasor diagrams. Okay, so just re to recap real quick, for source transformations, very similar to what we did previously when we we're only dealing with resistive networks, except now we're using, uh, we're working in the frequency domain, so we're working with phasor, the phasor uh, values for the voltage, a given sinusoidal voltage, and then the corresponding current and relating those through a complex impedance. And the impedance is just gr grouping together the response from the resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So we can do source transformation kind of the standard uh, way where if we have a, a, uh, a voltage source in series with a given impedance, we can transform that to a current source in parallel with the same value of the impedance uh, related through uh, the IS, it's gonna be equal to VS over Z. So really, again, kind of based on the Ohm's law type of uh, relationship that we used previously. And again, I can also go from the parallel combination with the, sor with the current source in parallel with the given impedance back to the voltage source. Um, similarly, just reversing this uh, equation a little bit. So that still works out. Uh, again, the only difference here is we're working with complex impedances now rather than just simple uh, resistances. Okay, so for node voltage analysis, again, the approach is very much similar to what we did prior. Um, the only difference being that now, again, we're still work we're working with uh, complex impedances. So I still kind of set it up the same way, um, define my reference node. Again, typically, I like to choose the bottom one. And then the node voltages now are going to be phasor quantities. Um, we'll just still say V1, V2. <clears throat> but again, we still write the uh, equations very similarly. So in this case, V1, again, we're summing up the currents that are um, coming into the node. And so any quantities coming into my node, I'm going to count as negative. So I got a minus uh, 10 amps coming from my current source. Then the voltage or the current going out through the middle branch of this 10 ohm resistor, right? Which would be plus a quantity V1 over the 10 ohm resistor. And then going current going down through this branch is also is going to be remember V1 minus V2 still the difference in those two node voltages over now five plus J2 because that's the total complex impedance for this short this branch right here okay and that will equal to zero and then again we write a separate another equation very similarly for V uh, sitting at node voltage V2. So we can say that the current coming, uh, traveling this direction would be V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1 over this again, five plus J2. It's our complex impedance for that branch again. Uh, coming down through this branch or across that capacitor. So it's gonna be plus V2 over that negative J5. That's the impedance of the capacitor. And then across through this branch, uh, so we have V2 minus this 10 volt source is what's being dropped across that 5 ohm resistor. So we would say V2 minus um, the 10 volt source over my 5 ohms also equal to zero, okay? So those equations set up very much in the same respect as how we did previously with just standard resistive networks. Uh, but now we're just dealing again with the complex impedance form. Okay, so similarly, we also talked about the mesh current method. Again, it's very similar in approach as to how we uh, go about um, working through this. We again set up uh, mesh currents, okay, although now again, that these are uh, mesh currents are going to be the phasor quantities, the complex uh, phasors I1, I2, let's say. And so we could write similar equations to describe those mesh currents. Um, Right? So in this case, um, we could say kind of the voltage drop, uh, again, across each element is what we're, we're looking for. So for example, across the inductor, we have the impedance is J2 times I1. So we can do I1 uh, times J2. 
two plus the um, voltage drop across this middle branch is going to be the, the current I1 minus I2 again times the combined impedance of my resistor and capacitor that's sitting right here. So that'd be I1 minus I2 uh, times 10 minus 2J for that quantity. Coming around, now I'm, I'm seeing a, a voltage source here, but I'm coming into the negative terminal, so this is a voltage rise, which means that's, that's going to be a, a minus uh, my five volts here, all equal to zero. Okay, similarly, we can write another equation for I2. So we got I2 times five ohm for my resistor up there, uh, coming down across a capacitor, also I2. Um, minus uh, I2 times negative J. Uh, here I'm dropping a voltage across this source here, so that's going to be plus 10 for my volts. Then coming up through my uh, middle branch here is going to again be now I2 minus I1. Uh, again times this combined impedance of my resistor and my capacitor, which is going to be 10 minus J2 equals zero. So again, standard mesh current equations that we worked before, again, just dealing with the uh, complex impedances. Okay, so the um, final topic we talked about was using phasor diagrams, and this is just kind of a, you know, really reminding you of how uh, these complex quantities are sort of viewed on the um, a figure as shown here, where kind of here we had talked about indicating a way that you could visualize um, the given phasers for like a parallel RLC circuit with some given current source and you could so you could map out uh, the currents for through the resistor inductor and capacitor uh, as shown kind of in the dark more darkened um, lines here with it what gives their angle and their relative magnitude and in this case because these are all in parallel we know that the source current has to be split um, or the source current has to be the sum of each of those given three uh, current components through each of the given passive circuit elements. So we could then figure out by just looking at the diagram uh, what the relative angle of that source needed to be. In this case we had talked about, uh, or the question we were working with asked us um, what, uh, what value of the resistor, what magnitude of the resistor value did we need to have in order to have like a, a lag of the current uh, of the phase angle of the current from the source relative to the current of the resistor. And so we could kind of use this to help us sort of more easily identify that uh, through a more visual expression rather than just simply looking at the numbers. So that's what that was about and that covered up for today's uh, lecture 15. And as always, stay classy.